For more perspective on this, well, let's go live to Occupy activist Alexa O'Brien, live in New York. Thanks for being with us. So you were in the park when the police started their raid. What did you see happen? Actually, I was uh, I was on Pine and Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, I got the sort of notification that the park was being raided at about 2 a.m., and I raced down to um, Occupy Wall Street. But uh, the blocks, like sort of two blocks, uh, the, the, the park was blockaded, and we were blocked from Zuccotti by about a two-block parameter around the park. And what did you see? I mean, what kind of... A what I saw was essentially wall-to-wall -wall police vans, cops in riot gear. Um, there, I, I've never seen so many police cars in my entire life. Every single parking spot was taken up. And all around Wall Street, I mean, on September 17th, you know, the NYPD blockaded and, and occupied um, Wall Street. And essentially, you know, they had mounted cops on Wall Street. Um, you couldn't really get anywhere near Zuccotti. Um, so there was about a mass of 500 people that ended up accumulating at Pine and Broadway. Um, and they were eventually dispersed by uh, a rush um, on the part of the NYPD towards them. What's been the reaction from you and the other activists? Any plans for any kind of resistance or anything like that? Well, activist is a funny word. I mean, most, most of these people are actually aren't activists. They're just normal, ordinary citizens. Uh, I'm not an activist. I'm a citizen. Um, yes, certainly resistance. Hmm. Dissent, yes. I mean, I think that Americans have no choice but to um, essentially raise these grievances with government because our government has been controlled by factions. You know, every institution of society, from the press to the, the civic square to our elections, are controlled by, you know, dominant factions that are essentially, um, you know, creating a myriad ills and abuses of a government that preys on the resources and the spirits of citizens. And so the police have faced criticism for some of the tactics that they've used. Have you been surprised by the way they've been gone about trying to dismantle what are peaceful protests or have relations with the police been up to this point? What they're doing is essentially tyrannical. I'm not surprised by it because, uh, you know, the citizens have been prevented from exercising their right to peaceable assembly in New York City and across the nation because the force established to serve and protect civil society now justifies an increased budget with, uh, you know, armaments. Um, using the war on terror as a sort of rationale for those increased budget budgets. And many of these forces um, have become, you know, like the, the NYPD, have become essentially counter-intel paramilitary forces. So I'm not surprised, you know, when you think about just a couple months ago, it was reported that the police commissioner had confirmed that a CIA officer was even working out of police headquarters. I mean, this is the state of democracy in our, uh, you know, in, 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 this is the state of our democratic republic. It is in decay. Though up to this point, I mean, do, do you think the police have been patient and respectful of the protesters? Up to this point, it appears as though the police, including Mayor Bloomberg at the top of the, uh, the administration, have been very tolerant of the protesters staying in the park and being allowed to use the facilities. What, you tolerant of the protesters? This is not a permission granted by some kind of overlord for the First Amendment. You know, we're talking whether or not the, you know, even the public agrees or disagrees. Citizens in the United States have the right to peaceable assembly. Now, you know, what the strategy of the mayor is with regards to Zuccotti Park. I mean, obviously, his, um, uh, you know, his, his, his girlfriend is on the board of that property. Um, you know, I'm a founder of an organization that endorsed the original call to Occupy Wall Street. And, and we suggested that the public... Uh, sidewalk was a far stronger assertion of First Amendment rights. But the easement laws in New York, you know, now that this sort of activity has sort of developed and, and matured, uh, it's not a black and white issue. So we don't need permission from the U.S. government or from any law enforcement official to peaceably assemble to address government with our grievances. What do you think is going to happen on Thursday? We were hearing reports that there will be a mass uh, march then. Um, I think that, that this continued b brutality on the part of the cops, especially coming at 2 a.m., you know, not al even arresting, you know, members of the press, not allowing any of the press to, to film what was going on. I think that it's essentially going to create a more dissent in this country because this is not an ideological protest. This is a protest that is based on people actually experiencing the consequences of a government that preys on the resources and the spirits of citizens. 
Right. How long do you think we expect the Occupy protest to continue? Um. Hmm. It depends. I mean, we, what, what are we talking about New York City? No, just in general. The Occupy protest as a concept. Is this going to, this shutdown going to be the end of it in places like New York and Oakland? Or do you think it's going to keep building as a movement and continue on? You can't arrest an idea. You know, Occupy, to me, individually, is the civic square in America. And I doubt Americans are going to continue to allow our civic square to be taken from us. It belongs to the citizens. More will be revealed. All right. I guess we'll look forward to that. Alexa O'Brien, Occupy activist, thanks for joining us from New York. Thank you so much. We're keeping an 